Hey guys, in this video we're going to be talking about radar detectors and specifically about on-axis versus off-axis performance and sensitivity. Uh, in order to discuss this, we're going to go ahead and get into a little bit of the science and physics behind how a radar detector is actually designed and then what impact that has on uh, the radar detection itself. Once we talk a little bit about the physics and the theory behind the radar detectors, we're going to go into uh, how relevant that is in terms of real-world radar detection out in the field, as well as uh, keeping that in mind as far as different uh, test results, whether you're doing your own testing or you're looking at uh, other people's test results online. So this is going to be kind of one of those uh, educational, science-y type videos where we're going to dive a little bit more under the hood of these uh, radar detectors so that you can understand what's really going on uh, when the detector goes beep, right? So that's what we're going to go ahead and go in and discuss here today. So uh, what is on-axis versus off-axis sensitivity when it comes to radar detectors? Well, an on-axis signal is basically a signal that's coming in uh, straight into the detector like this. An off-axis signal is a signal that's coming in at an angle, like this. Uh, so let's say you're driving down a road and it's perfectly straight and there's an officer way up ahead of you and he's shooting down the road like this. This would be considered an on-axis signal. Uh, however, let's say you're driving and there's some curves ahead. And so you're driving uh, in this direction, but the road kind of curves like this, and the cop is actually shooting at an angle like this, so his radar gun is actually shooting this direction. Well, that signal, as it's actually uh, coming to your radar detector, is actually going to be coming in at an angle, or what we call off-axis. And so the signal, it's actually being presented to your radar detector off-axis. And uh, the sensitivity that a radar detector has to a signal that's coming in on axis can actually be quite different to a signal that's coming in off axis. And so uh, the angle at which the signal is arriving to the radar detector can actually impact its sensitivity and ultimately its range. And so if the radar gun is actually pointed this way, the detector may not actually alert versus if the radar gun is actually pointed this way due to the curvature in the road. Even if there's nothing, there's no trees or anything even blocking the signal, uh, the angle at which the signal is being transmitted can impact uh, whether or not your detector alerts. Same thing if you're doing a uh, radar detector test. You know, you're going to want to make sure that your radar detector is pointed directly uh, at uh, the radar gun if you're going to want to test for maximum sensitivity. Uh, if you're doing any test and you've got the detector sometimes pointed this way, sometimes pointed this way or that way, that's going to actually have a huge impact on uh, your actual you know, results and so you're going to want to make sure that your detector is always pointed in the same direction and that every detector is pointed in the exact same direction. So uh, first of all, why does this actually happen? Like, why are detectors, you know, maybe better at detecting signals at one direction and not so much at another direction? Well, it has to do actually with the uh, antenna that's built into the detector itself. Uh, we sometimes refer to it as the horn, H-O-R-N, the horn of the radar detector instead of the antenna, but basically it's the same idea. Now, when it comes to antennas, there's a whole bunch of different types of antennas that you can use, and each one has their own pros and cons. Uh, the most basic antenna is one that's uh, equally sensitive in all directions. There's a fancy word for it, it's called an isotropic antenna. That's basically a fancy word that means the uh, antenna is equally sensitive in every direction. Up, down, left, right, uh, forward, backwards, it doesn't matter what direction the signal is coming from, the antenna is going to be equally sensitive in every direction. Uh, this type of antenna doesn't exactly exist in real life, but it's kind of one of those theoretical ones. Um, kind of a similar implementation of this uh, would be the antenna that's on your car that's designed to listen to the radio. When you're driving around, the radio tower could be in any direction, and as you're driving, your car is turning, right? And so the radio tower could be in front of you, it could be behind you, it could be to the left or to the right, so we're not going to want to favor any one direction in particular. Uh, we do know that the uh, tower is probably not going to be directly above us, <laughs> and it's not going to be coming from the ground below us, right? So we're not going to be as concerned about a signal uh, above or below, right, in the vertical direction. We're mainly considered uh, concerned about the you know, equal sensitivity in all directions, 360 degrees around the antenna. So uh, the radiation pattern, if you will, kind of the shape 
of the sensitivity, if you were to visualize, it would be kind of pancake shaped. It would be sort of flat, right? It would be kind of flat. We don't really care about up or down so much. It's mostly sensitive uh, in a round direction like this, not focused in any one direction. However, what happens if you're working with something like a radar detector and uh, you know that generally speaking, the threats are gonna be in front of you or behind you. Like you're not concerned about you know radar way off on the side. You're wondering as you're actually driving towards the source, you wanna be picking up the radar signals in front of you. Well, you can actually design your antenna to more, uh, to actually favor detection of signals that are in front of you and almost reject the signals that are coming in at an angle. And uh, you can do this by designing your antenna itself to make it more directional. And there's a whole bunch of different ways of doing this. Like satellite dishes are one example. They're, you know, like a fixed satellite dish. It's not moving. It's always pointed at this one satellite that's focused up in space. The satellite is in geosynchronous orbit. The satellite's not moving. The satellite dish is not moving. And so we don't really care about detecting signals off at a side. We just want to detect signals coming in right from the satellite dish. So it's a directional antenna. Right? Same sort of idea here. We're going to make our uh, antenna directional because we know that in practice that's mostly what we're interested in here with uh, the radar detectors. So the way it works is you can actually design your antenna to make it less sensitive at an angle, but the trade-off is it makes it more sensitive here uh, straight ahead. And uh, that's actually going to be giving us better performance when it comes to detecting signals ahead of us with the trade-off of uh, giving you less performance here off axis. And this is gonna be the case pretty much with every radar detector on the market. Uh, they are gonna vary. Some of them may be you know, more equally balanced where the on axis is not as extreme relative to the off axis and some are maybe the off axis kinda of sucks and the on axis is really good, right? Um, when it comes to the sensitivity, there's basically two main aspects that determine how sensitive a radar detector is. Number one is gonna be the antenna that we're, kind of we're talking about here. The other thing is actually gonna be the electronics inside your uh, radar detector itself. And basically what the radar detector is doing is saying, I have a certain level of noise, right? I can't get rid of all the noise. I'm gonna have a certain level of noise and I'm wondering how weak of a signal can I still detect an alert to that's above my noise floor, the whole signal to noise ratio, right? How weak of a signal can I detect? Doesn't matter what direction it's coming from or anything. I have a certain noise floor and then I'm presented with a signal. How weak of a signal can I still detect an alert to before it's too weak and I can no longer see it above my noise floor? So that's actually the sensitivity of the electronics within the radar detector. Now, as far as the uh, antenna that's bringing that signal in, you can actually vary the antenna design to change up the, uh, the radiation pattern that it can actually detect radar with. And uh, the way that it works is, uh, remember I mentioned that isotropic antenna, the spherical one that's equally sensitive in all directions? Well, that's really cool. It can detect radar equally in all directions. And what you can actually do completely independent, completely independent of the electronics and the circuitry within the radar detector is you can design the antenna to give you better range on axis if you're willing to forego some of the sensitivity off axis. So that's kind of the trade-off. You can basically say, I have a certain amount of power that I can work with. If I sacrifice detection uh, at an angle, I can then more, uh, I can actually focus my power all in one direction. So I'm actually gonna be getting better performance in one direction by sacrificing some of the detection I can get from an angle. And that's actually the idea behind directional antennas. And again, that's totally independent of the sensitivity of the electronics in the detector. That's purely a result of the antenna itself. And so the antenna or the horn, it's actually really, really important. And so that's why uh, different detectors will have different uh, levels of on-axis versus off-axis sensitivity. They're all created differently. They have different designs. And when you hear certain detectors have an M5 or an M4 or an M3 horn or an S7, like they're all different styles of horns that will give you different characteristics in terms of sensitivity and on-axis versus off-axis performance. Uh, this right here is actually the Escort Passport, and this has an M4 style horn, which uh, it's going to give you reduced off-axis performance at the expense of on-axis. And the whole idea is it's, this is kind of their more uh, 
economical budget friendly platform as the N M4. And so they're going to be using less sensitive electronics here and what they do to make up for it is to give you that longer range they're going to be sacrificing the off axis performance here to give you the longer on axis performance. And so what you're seeing when you're going to be looking at the different marketing material and they say you know this detector has great long range performance well what they're actually doing is because they're saving money by using less sensitive circuitry in here they're focusing um, their abilities of detecting signals on axis at the expense of off axis performance. Something you'll see with some of the uh, more expensive detectors such as the M3 platform which is used in the red line. What they're going to do is that detector is actually much much more sensitive here and so they're not going to actually have to sacrifice as much of the off axis sensitivity in order to give you the on axis performance. And so that detector can actually perform better both on axis and off axis. So if you're looking at a test and you're like, which one has the longest range? And you're like, well, you know, the red line, yeah, it's still going to give you better range on axis than what you're going to get here with the Passport. But in addition to that, it's off axis performance is actually even better than what you're going to be getting here with the off axis performance in the Passport because they're not actually having to sacrifice as much here to gain as much back there. So that's actually something really cool to know about when you're looking at test results and you're trying to say which one has the longest range. Like it's a little oversimplified to say well this detector has better range than that one. Yeah, like, yeah that's true. That's maybe on axis but what about the off axis performance? Like again that's really important when it comes down to detecting signals when there's curves and bends in the road that kind of stuff right like in real life that's actually a really really big deal and so uh you know like if you're coming around to bend you're going to want to detect signals when they're still coming in at an angle like that that's really really important and so something uh really good to keep in mind now this is something really important when you're looking at uh, radar detector testing and it's why whenever you're doing any sort of testing you really really want to make sure that your detector is pointed straight ahead every single time. Every detector pointed straight ahead. You know, if you start rotating your detectors while you're testing you're no longer doing an apples to apples test. Like, You want to compare on axis performance to on axis performance if you're looking for uh, you know, an apples to apples comparison, right? And it sounds kind of like common sense, but I actually saw a test done recently where a person, uh, rather than actually mounting their radar detector on their windshield in the exact same location, like for every test, so, you know, there was no variability, they were actually hand holding the detector and was actually rotating the detector, different detectors, sometimes they would hold it like this, sometimes they would hand hold it like that or like that, pointing it off to the left or the right, and then trying to actually measure how sensitive the detector was and how long the range was, which is crazy. Like based on you know the results uh, that you guys can see, like this will have a huge deal when it comes to your actual final results. If you do that sort of thing and you're trying to measure the range while you're also rotating the detector, your results are basically going to be invalid because now you're also looking at on axis versus off axis performance and you no longer have a direct apples to apples comparison. When you're doing any sort of testing like radar detector testing or otherwise you want to control as many variables as you can right. You want to be basically saying I want the only variables to be when I'm uh, you know, testing radar detectors, I want the only variable to be how sensitive my detector is. I don't want things like traffic being in the way, um, potentially blocking or reflecting signals and impacting the results. Like, yes, in the real world, sometimes it's actually really hard to find a course where there's no traffic. And so, you know, the ideal case may or may not be what you're going to be finding in real life. Like, and you can learn a ton of stuff when weird things start happening in testing. I'm not saying that that's, you know, going to be completely wrong and never ever useful in any way but if you're trying to really do a test where you're saying which detector is more sensitive you want to have as many things constant as you possibly can and so when it comes to on axis versus off axis sensitivity you want to make sure that your detector is actually mounted in the same location in the vehicle every time every detector is mounted in the same location it's mounted uh, level and straight right it's not pointed up it's not pointed down it's not pointed to the left it's not pointed to the right you want the car in the same location I mean you want the radar gun don't handheld your radar gun you want the radar gun antenna fixed pointed in one location because this whole thing about on axis versus off axis uh, performance also applies to the radar gun. The beam spread of the uh, radar gun is typically only about 12 degrees wide and so if you start actually you know 
pointing the radar gun in different directions if you're hand holding it, that can really also impact uh, detection on the radar detector's end as well. I mean, it's obviously going to be impacting your radar gun if you're pointing it in a different direction. You can no longer clock cars. And so, again, you want it to be realistic. You want your, you know, detector pointed downrange, you want your radar gun pointed downrange, and you want to keep everything fixed and constant. That way we have a really good apples to apples comparison and just to make sure that our results are valid. You know, if you start changing stuff like that up, your results are not going to be reflective of reality. It's going to start, I mean, one detector is going to look better than another, which doesn't actually have anything to do with the detectors themselves. You're actually introducing some variability in your testing methodology that's actually going to be invalidating your results because of the way you're doing the test, independent of the radar detectors themselves. And so it's one of those things of when you're looking at any sort of radar detector test, you're going to want to you know, make sure the person is actually keeping everything fixed and constant. Make sure their methodology is sound, that everything is you know, not changing every time they do the test. You want everything fixed, the same, consistent, repeatable, and that way you can ensure that what we're trying to test for is what our test is actually showing us, right? So when it comes to testing, obviously, we're gonna to wanna to make sure our detector is pointed downrange, straight, not pointed left or right at all. We want, you know, same spot on the windshield, same direction every time we uh, make a run with our detector. And then when it comes to real world uh, driving, again, this is going to be really, really important to know that the detector is actually going to be better when it comes on axis versus off axis. So for you guys who live in areas where, uh, you know, there's mostly straightaways, like out in the open desert, you know, it's going to be mostly more on axis performance. Off axis isn't going to be as big of a deal. But it's still important because, you know, the roads may start to curve a little bit over time, that kind of stuff. And, you know, if the radar gun is shooting this way, that's going to also impact, uh, the way your detector sees the signal. So it's definitely still important, even in long, straight, open roads and you know the open desert. Uh, but obviously this is also gonna be a big deal if you've got a lot more curves and that kind of stuff. Uh, mountains, whatever, you know, detecting signals through trees, like if there's trees even blocking the signal and it's coming in off axis, that's gonna be a situation where a more sensitive detector is really, really gonna shine even more so because not only does it have to deal with signals coming in you know, from an angle where it's actually weaker, but then it also has things blocking the signal, such as trees, hills, what have you, that are reducing the signal strength even further, and which makes it even more important to have a more sensitive detector. So this is one of those things where it's really, really helpful, like as we start, you know, playing with our detectors and testing and figuring out how they work and how they compare and this situation and on that course, like different courses will highlight different attributes and different aspects of different radar detectors. So not every course will give you the same results. Not every course will highlight the same aspects of a radar detector. So it's really good as you're viewing different tests to say, okay, you know, you can learn a bunch of things from one test and a bunch of things from another test and a bunch of things from another test. And putting all the pieces together, you get a better understanding of the big picture. And one of the important parts of understanding the big picture is understanding how a detector works in terms of both on-axis and off-axis sensitivity. So there we go. I hope that explains a little bit as far as, you know, why that's important in real life, why that's important in testing, and also a little bit about the science and physics and theory behind, you know, why this is actually the case in the first place. It just has to do with the directionality of the antenna and how much they focus a signal here uh, at the expense of uh, off-axis sensitivity, which is just kind of antenna design type stuff. And that's something that all the engineers take care of. It's not something that you can tweak or change. It's just a property of the radar detector. So. Anyways, cool. There you go. There's a look at uh, on-axis and off-axis sensitivity. Hope that's been helpful. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, love doing this kind of stuff more. You know, a lot of the technical, scientific stuff. Like This is the stuff I really, really love doing. So probably going to do a bunch more of these. Um, so if you really like this kind of stuff too, you know, please jump in, ask questions, jump into the discussion. Like I'm always learning a ton of stuff too. So please share, you know, what you guys know. Teach me things. Like I love this. Uh, again, if you want to, you know, stay updated, subscribe, you can do that as well. And until next time, I will uh, see you guys later. Bye-bye.